All right, this is Jolie here for Seconds Out. Derek Osaze is joining me. Fight week. How are you feeling, man? Yeah, man, I'm feeling good, man. I can't complain. Um, it's not, <laughs> it's not the first time I've been uh, through a fight week. So, yeah, man, it's been cool. Training's gone good. I always stay in the gym, so I keep a good level of base fitness and I'm always sparring as well. Um, so, yeah, camp's been good. Um, just, yeah, fight week, just tapering down. Staying sharp and yeah, good to go on Friday. Are you still middleweight? Yeah, I'm still middleweight. This fight I think will be at um around eleven stone between eleven stone ten and eleven stone twelve. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm still middleweight. For my last fight, which was over a year ago, it actually weighed in quite under. I was eleven stone four. Um, so yeah, so I made I made middleweight quite comfortably. So I, I've got a. Uh, I've finished business at middleweight, so you won't see me moving up anytime soon unless certain boxes have been ticked at middleweight first. Yeah, of course. Obviously, you were the um, boxer, all my boxer champion. Uh, um, it feels like a while ago now, but what years ago. Been... Sorry, what were you saying then? The years ago now, man. Years ago. <laughs> That's in the past. <laughs> yeah, but um, what what have you been doing? I feel like we might as well start before we kind of focus on Friday. What have you been in, in the last... It's been over a year now since you fought Tyler Denny. Yeah, so I, I've still been in the gym. Like, I, it's been... It's been a... I wouldn't even say the last year. Probably the last... Or well, pre-COVID, the last two and a bit years. It's been interesting, you know. I had my first 10 pro fights um, in less than two years. I made my pro debut December 2017. And I had my 10 pro fights September 2019. Um, so just under two years. And since then, I've literally had one fight. This would be my second fight in almost three years. So it's not been ideal. And if I had to summarise the last year, it'd be impossible to summarise the last year without summarising the last, what, two or three years since then. Um, so, but yeah, it's not it's not been the, the most straightforward period. Do you know what I mean? Um, like I said, after my 10th fight, I was scheduled to book December 2019. Show fell through a few days before. Early January 2020, tore my calf muscle so I, I was in a boot and on crutches for a few months ease back into training beginning of March lockdown hit um, there was some talks of some fights behind closed doors dates kept getting postponed managed to, finally managed to get a date um, on a boxer show that was on ITV um, IT4 BT Sport in November um, literally walking down to the bottom to the ground floor at the hotel for the way in um, then I was informed that I failed a COVID test, had no symptoms, which was a bit crazy. And even more crazy that I'd done that like, two tests the following day and one came out positive, one came out negative. So I don't know if it was inconclusive. <laughs> so that was end of 2020, 2020 was gone, no fights. And then early 2021, a lot of dates fell through. So by the time the Tyler Denny fight came around, it was offered to us. Like I'd been out of the ring almost two years. Um I hadn't done a six rounder. I hadn't done an eight rounder. Like I literally only just done four rounders, and um, I'd done obviously the three rounds in the tournament. My tenth fight was actually a scheduled six rounder, but obviously they stopped it. The fight got stopped in the second round, so I hadn't been past four rounds. And then obviously I'd been out for two years. So looking back at it now, I think uh, I probably was a bit too hard on myself after that fight because there was not many. There's not many pros who would. Uh, not have a fight for almost two years and go straight back into a 10-rounder with a fighter like Tyler Denny who's obviously gone a distance a few times considering I never I never even done the six or the eight Um, so yeah so then obviously after that but I wouldn't change it I learned a lot uh, um, from that fight Um, I learned a lot about myself Um, like fitness wise all that was never a problem like I did the 10 rounds comfortably but just experience knowing how to manage the, that distance effectively knowing how to sort of kind of box to a game plan over 10 rounds. Um, so, yeah, then following on from that, I thought, you know, it'd be easier to get fights, um, obviously having my first defeat. But um, it was quite the contrary. It was quite the opposite, you know. Um, I still, we had a lot of opportunities for fights that were offered to me that we accepted and just, yeah, just didn't materialise. Um, so, and then, yeah, fast forward almost over 12 months, then I find myself here. So, I've been in the gym constantly since then. I've still been sparring. I've had quality sparring since then. Still stay in the gym twice a day, even when I haven't got a fight. So, um, so yeah, so that's what sort of kind of brought me 
to this point. So it's been a roller coaster. <laughs> it's been a roller coaster yeah. for a bit of years, man. Uh, yeah. Talk to us about the mental strength needed to come through those moments where fight after fight, pushback, injuries, COVID, um, obviously taking your first loss in the professional game as well. Those low moments, what was the mental strength that brought you through it? Um, yeah, the mental strength has taken a bit of a beat in the last couple of years, if I'm being honest, you know what I'm saying? I feel like mentally, you know, been stretched and been pulled, you know, even within dealing with all of that stuff, uh, you know, I became a father as well. <laughs> in, Congratulations, so, yeah. I appreciate it. So, um, just had to deal, had to deal with a lot, but you know mm. what it is? Um, I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but you just, you just suck it up and absorb it and just keep moving as much as you can. Where I don't know if that's a positive or a negative. Have I really, you know, gone back and addressed properly maybe have I sat down and had like a debrief and said oh Derek like how did you feel how did you overcome this I haven't really thought about it to be honest um but yeah you just keep going and I'm just obviously my faith in God is a is a big element of my life and that's sort of kind of been the foundation that sort of kind of kept me grounded in the sense of just understanding that you know everything even out of our control if allowed to happen happens for a reason so um, I couldn't have, you know, envisaged what would have happened in the past two and a bit years. But at the end of the day, I still can't complain. I'm still grateful that where I find myself, do you know what I mean? So, yeah, literally for me, just my faith in God and the people around me. And, yeah, more times I, I try not to overthink things. Easier said than done. You just roll with it. You just got to keep moving, man. That's what it is. How much is welcoming a child into the family giving you a new source of motivation as well how much has that helped during that period yeah it's been a, it's been a massive source source of motivation um funny enough he was born like right in the middle of uh, like one of our camps um obviously when i was meant to box november 2020 yeah when the show that um didn't happen because i found a covid test he was literally born same day as me 11th of october so no about, yeah, about two or three weeks before I was scheduled to fight on 8th of November. So it was crazy because I was in the middle of camp. I felt like I, I wasn't in a place where I could even process it properly. Do you know mm. what I mean? All I know is that like I was trying to, I was doing my runs one minute and coming back and changing, changing nappies in the next minute. But it's definitely, <laughs> it's added a different element to, to me as an individual, as a person, and obviously as an athlete, because... Um, you realize that you're not you're not fighting for yourself anymore. Anything you do now in life is not for yourself. You know what I mean? Your main your main responsibility. You know, my main focus is on making sure that you know my family are set, that my son is all right, and any any kids to come are 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 well looked after. Do you know what I'm saying? So it just puts a lot of things into perspective, really. But yeah, it definitely gives you an added layer of motivation. Yeah, I was listening to the Nigerian nightmare Kamara was on Joe Rogan um, just last week. And he was saying how his most recent fight with Leon Edwards, although he took a lot in the end, his yeah. kids were cage side and he almost had to blank the fact that they were even there because mm. there's that emotional connection that you can't al always feel, especially on a fight week when you turn into a fighter and you're looking to damage someone um i'd recommend watching that actually it's, it's a yeah, really yeah. watch and um he talks he handled the loss so well but um just just how do you kind of manage being a father fatherhood and fighting at the same time because it's a topic that hasn't been dug into too much recently yeah it's a it's a great question and i think loads of people who like myself who are still navigating it i feel like our our chapters are still being written so we're not really at the end of the story. Um, based on up until now, how has it been sort of kind of uh, merging the different roles? I feel like you you reach a point where you have so many different hats on. I go to the gym and I have to put one hat on, you know, I'm the fighter, um, the boxer. Um, there is, you know, what is required of me in the gym is different. I come home and as soon as my gym band drops at the door, now my son, he, he hears when my car is coming. So I see him at the window waiting for me to come in. He's sometimes behind the door. And as soon as my gym bag drops and um, yeah. I pick him up, 
the dad hat comes on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not thinking about. I might be tired, and I'm, I'm not thinking about training or anything. Um, um, he doesn't know I've had a hard session. He doesn't know I've had a hard spa. He, he doesn't know how I'm feeling. He just sees, oh, daddy, playtime. Do you know mm. what I mean? So then you got to put that hat on. And then obviously, in terms of my family, when I go to church, I have a different hat on as well because the focus is more not even on on me, myself, as a boxer. It's not on uh, my family when I'm at home. I'm a dad. It's more on others, you know, uh, members of the of the church, members of the congregation. So, yeah, it's, um, it's only by the grace of God. I feel like I still sit down sometimes and I think, yeah, <laughs> Yeah, I sit and ask myself, like, yeah, how, how does all this work? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But it's literally, it's only by God. I couldn't I couldn't tell you that I have a manual because, like, like I said, I feel like many of us who are in this scenario where we're fighters, we're fathers or mothers or, you know, we have so many different hats on. I feel like we're still writing the chapters of our own books. And who knows, maybe you might ask me the same question uh, some years from now and my answer will change. <laughs> Well, combining everything we've spoken about so far then, how important is Friday night? Um, Friday night is, is, is very important, but I feel like I've learned in the last couple of years that everything is not the be-all and end-all. Um, so for me, I'm looking at Friday night. Someone actually asked me the other day, like, how are you feeling? I said, oh, it's a weird one. Um, I don't feel nervous. Um, I'd say like based on how what I've gone through in terms of fights, I can't feel excited because <laughs> like I've gotten so close to so many fights that they haven't materialized. So I feel like I just sort of kind of manage my emotions to just be on like a, a flat line, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I don't know something that's just so automatic now, based on my experience in the last couple of years. Um, but yeah, it's just an important fact to sort of kind of get me back into the swing of things. I'm not thinking about anything. I'm not thinking about any future fights ahead. I'm not thinking about anyone other than myself, really, man. It's just sort of kind of for me to get back in there, um, go back to doing what I love um, under those bright lights. And I think sort of kind of reigniting uh, my love for boxing, because I feel like in the last couple of years, my love for the sport and having to maybe deal with some of the business side of it and the polit political sides of it mm. has sort of kind of, you know, affected my love for the sport um so yeah friday is is very much important to me personally um sort of kind of just getting back into the swing of things getting a win under my belt and sort of kind of reigniting a fire that may have been dimmed out due to certain circumstances or challenges that, that faced in the last couple of years so yeah it's an important night yeah of course um i don't know if you know much about mma but obviously leon edwards just won the belt off kamara Usman. And he yeah, had yeah. very similar scenarios, build up. Yeah. There was a two year period similar to you. Fight was called off yeah. um, for COVID. There was, there was, he was meant to headline. He got called off. Yeah, and yeah. So many different things. And I poke a fight had to get pulled. Yeah, he yeah. could have fought for the title and he didn't. And obviously he ended up winning. You're expected to win on Friday night. But um, yeah, best of luck. I want to move on to the big news we spoke a moment mm -hmm. ago just before the, the interview started about Anthony Joshua Tyson Fury. We're not sure how true this is though yet. How do you see this situation panning out? Just before we started this, Tyson Fury's announced it will be a 60-40 split. So that's kind of, that's pretty fair. 60% to Tyson Fury, no? <laughs> um, before all the Fury diehard fans come for our neck, uh, when it comes to Tyson Fury, Tyson Fury says a lot of things. <laughs> I feel like he's got so many different personas. We've heard Tyson Fury that says he'll box for free. We've heard Tyson Fury that will say all his money's gone to charity. We've heard Tyson Fury that then says he doesn't care about the money, but then, then says he will come out of retirement for 500 million. Then we then heard Tyson Fury now, obviously, who obviously he's called out AJ for a fight. Which a fight was, which was there for the taking for a long time, and now he's saying sixty forty split. So, um, it's kind of hard to, for me personally, to believe anything that Tyson Fury says, if I'm being completely honest. So, um, and that's not just with Tyson Fury, but Tyson Fury is sort of kind of represents how many of us feel towards boxing now that we just don't believe anything till it happens. Yeah. <laughs> 
you know what I'm saying? Yeah. In the last few years, especially with the heavyweight division, like I'm just tired of hearing about, yeah, this fight's going to get made, this fight's going to get made, <laughs> this fight's almost closed, this fight's closed. And it never happens, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, all throughout the time, when we're talking about AJ Fury, and then, then we have this, the was it the third fight? for Fury Wilder. Yeah. So, um, as for me, what do I think about it? I'm taking everything that is said with a pinch of salt until the fight is signed and sealed on dotted line. Then we'll see. As for me personally, um, looking at in terms of AJ's last two fights and sort of kind of, you know, um, his reaction after, that comes across as someone who, who's had to deal with a lot of pressures in the last how many years of his career. That looks like someone who's maybe mentally and emotionally exhausted, who just needs maybe a break from boxing or a break from the limelight, a break from boxing at the highest level. Maybe he just needs to have a couple of fights for himself where he can just sort of kind of enjoy the sport again because uh, I think the pressure of the sport got so much to him that I don't think he was enjoying it anymore. And I think that was evident in his reaction after um, so yeah, so I would like to see him just sort of kind of uh, take a step back, have a break, or if he does want to carry on fighting, just have a few more fights that will help him um, sort of confidence boost the fights or some easier fights. Because like, like I feel like every fight he's had in the last how many years has been a AJ wins or his career looms on this fight or whatnot. Mm. So the guy deserves a bit of a break, man. But in terms of going back to what Tyson Fury said. Every boxer says a lot of things, man. Take, take over a pinch of salt until the fight actually happens, if it happens. Yeah. Um, when that fight happens, because I feel like yeah. it, it will do eventually, um, yeah. what do you see happening? And if it is December, which, again, take that with a pinch of salt, yeah, yeah. still early, how would... How would it play out with obviously Tyson being the taller man undefeated and AJ has obviously had losses now? Um, I don't see the fight the same way everyone else sees it. Obviously, everyone sees it as yeah, Tyson Cruz is going to go in there completely outbox him. It's going to be too big for him, which could happen. Um, but I still give AJ a punch of a chance. Um, I feel like uh, we forget, and this is Tyson Fury. Don't get me wrong, he's an amazing boxer. Um, but he's not invincible. Um, he, he he has been dropped a few times by Wilder. Um, he's been dropped um, by Steve Cunningham, who was a former cruiserweight. Mm. So um, he's not completely invincible. Do you know what I mean? He he's he's just a man like anybody else. A very talented man in that fact in the boxing ring. So I'd give AJ AJ a, a punch in chance. Um, if we're comparing fights and styles. Okay, in the in the few fights that Wilder had with Fury, um, I would say that AJ technically is probably a better boxer than Wilder. Um, Wilder hits very hard. Does AJ hit hard as well? I think he does. And Fury and Wilder was able to to drop Fury a couple of times, although he got up. Um, so I feel okay, better technically boxer AJ, who's probably probably has a decent decent hand speed, decent movement. With good power as well. If he caught Fury, could he knock Fury out? Possibly, yeah. Could Fury knock AJ out? Possibly, yeah. Could Fury outbox him? Possibly, yeah. So I'd give AJ a puncher's chance, um, personally. Um, and if I'm being a bit biased, you know, being that AJ, AJ is my guy. That's my <laughs> that's my brother from another mother. I'll obviously I'd back AJ, I'd want AJ to win. Um, but it could be anyone's fight. I don't think it's a foregone conclusion. Mm-hmm as everyone thinks it is. Okay. Well, it's been a really good to get your insight on your personal uh, career over the last couple of years and obviously building up to Friday night. So I appreciate that. And then obviously the Fury stuff at the end, whether that comes true, I guess we'll, we'll wait and see. By Friday, by the time you're 40, it'll either be dipped in the water or nipped in the blue yeah. and it won't be happening. Or who knows? <laughs> I waited to see, I waited to see what, what controversial uh, YouTube uh, title caption this is gonna be yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's that's <laughs> what it's all one. about whenever you mention AJ or Fury there's always one but yeah <laughs> but now I appreciate it man appreciate it Joe and yeah I think like I think you're a great interview about it really, man. thank I you I think you should do more podcasts like honestly like you ask like really cool questions or whatnot and you don't just ask like the general like 
boxer fighter questions. How you feeling? How's the weight? <laughs> What's the next fight? Who do you want to fight next? Who would you call out? Do you know what I mean? So, so yeah, man. Kudos to you. Bro. Appreciate that, bro. Hopefully, um, yeah, job done Friday night and um, I should be there. So, see you yeah, soon. Cool. Um, take care, man. Thank you.